Hello, this is Chef John from foodwishes.com with homemade garlic basil mayonnaise. That's right. I've wanted to do an updated version of our very old but groundbreaking how to make homemade mayonnaise video. And this delicious garlic basil version gave me the perfect excuse. And as I mentioned in the original version, if you've never tasted homemade mayonnaise, you've never tasted mayonnaise. So let me show you how to put this together. The key to this technique is a very specific piece of equipment, the stick blender, also known as the immersion blender. And as you know, I don't do a lot of product recommendations because they're boring, but this is one tool that every kitchen should have. These are going to run you about 40 or 50 bucks, but it's an incredible investment and not just for making your own mayonnaise. I mean, just for soups and sauces alone, it's worth every penny. So if you don't have one, get one and then make this. All right, so before we get to the mayonnaise, we're gonna do a little bit of prep. I'm gonna pick about a cup of basil leaves because what I like to do is blanch my basil very briefly to lock in that green color. And I'll talk a little more about that later, but I have about a cup of picked basil leaves. On the stove, I'm gonna bring some water to a simmer and right next to it, some ice water. And we're gonna do two things. Like I said, we're gonna blanch our basil, but we're also gonna sterilize the outside of a couple eggs. And some of you in the original version were a little concerned about the raw egg. You were like, I'm scared of dying from salmonella poisoning. So to play it super safe, we're gonna dunk those eggs in this simmering water for about 30 seconds. That will kill any critters on the outside. So we're gonna give that about half a minute in that simmering water, and then we're gonna transfer that into our ice water. All right, we don't wanna cook the egg. Like I said, we're just sterilizing the outside. And once that's happened, go ahead and dump in your handful of basil. And this is literally only going in there for a few seconds. As fast as you can get it in and stir it around. I want you to fish it out with your strainer and put that into the ice water to stop the cooking. All right, so our basil is blanched. Theoretically, our eggs are safe. And now we can proceed with the recipe. In addition to the stick blender, even more importantly would be some kind of mixing container which has a base basically the same size as the blender. Now these usually come with some kind of measuring cup like this. If it doesn't, you can use like a pint beer glass or a measuring cup, but it is key that the base of that is not much wider than the blender itself. Otherwise this just won't work, which means it won't get thick and rich, it'll just stay liquefied. And you'll be very disappointed. All right, so step one here, we're gonna add our egg yolks in and we're gonna separate those from the white through our fingers. You could do this shell to shell, but I like to crack it in my hand and give it the old shake a shake -a. And that white will separate from the yolk quite easily. And we're gonna transfer that into our cup. All right, so I did two egg yolks, just the yolks. And if you get a little bit of white in there, it's not a problem, so relax. Always try to relax when you cook. All right, food can sense fear. And in addition to two egg yolks, I'm gonna add some garlic. You want that finely minced to begin with. This blender is much more of a mixer than a cutter and chopper. So make sure your garlic's crushed pretty fine. We're also gonna need some acid. I'm using lemon juice. Vinegar also works or a combination. We're gonna throw in a big pinch of salt, some cayenne, and some freshly ground black pepper. At that point, we're gonna go ahead and add our basil. All right, so give it a squeeze. And regarding blanching the basil, if you don't, you'll still get this nice, pleasant, light green color. But after a day or two, it kind of turns gray and oxidizes. And by blanching it, it seems to stay nicer longer. So that's why I do it. We're gonna to toss that in. I'm also gonna put in a little spoon of Dijon mustard. Mustard has a natural emulsifier in it, which helps this process. And then last but not least, our oil gets poured over the top. All right, so I want you to put the oil in last. I want you to give it a minute so everything settles. And then it's time to blend. And don't blink, this happens in a matter of seconds. So take your stick blender and push it all the way down to the bottom firmly, and you are not gonna move it from the bottom until some very specific things happen. We're gonna start by pulsing on and off one second at a time. So you're gonna pulse, 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 and we're not gonna move that blender until we clearly see mayonnaise forming at the bottom. When you see that thick, rich mayonnaise forming, you can pulse it on a little longer, you can slowly wiggle it and start drawing it up through the oil. And in a matter of seconds, it will all be perfectly combined and you will be looking at the thickest, richest, most gorgeous mayonnaise you've ever seen, okay? The only way to screw this up is to bring that blender up through the oil too quickly. As you know, generally my attitude is don't sweat the technique. But in this case, you wanna sweat the technique a little bit, okay? And believe it or not, that's done. Homemade mayo, mayo. At that point, I'm gonna transfer that into a bowl. I'm gonna to switch to a freakishly small rubber spatula, and then we'll taste for seasoning. Maybe you want a little more salt. I did. That's up to you. You're the boss of your homemade mayonnaise seasonings. So taste and adjust. And once that seasoning's perfect, go ahead and enjoy this in any one of eight million ways. If I had to pick one way, it would be like this, just on bread. 
And at that point, you are ready to enjoy one of life's simple and most awesome pleasures. And forget that this has garlic and basil in it. The technique will work no matter what you flavor this with. Of course, basil and garlic is quite a nice thing to flavor things with. That was really delicious. I mean, just such a treat. So anyway, I really hope you give this a try. If you have a stick blender, you have no excuses. And if you don't, buy one and try this. Like I said, it's an amazing tool and this is just one of the things you can do with it. So head over to foodwishes.com for all the ingredients and more info as usual. And as always, enjoy. Enjoy.